When couples come in and one of them is cheated, it's probably one of the most painful things I have to work with with couples. It's also an opportunity for me to help educate them so that they can understand that cheating does not just happen. It's bigger than that. It's laid by a foundation co-created by the two of you. So basically, when you get married, you react to each other, you put out vibes, you put out bids to draw the other person in, you live together, you love together, and you forgive together. And what ends up happening when one of you gets in a bad pattern, or maybe you learned something bad from the past, you begin responding in a different way, and you co-create a very poor foundation. The foundation is so full of hate, anger, resentment, that many times it's almost like the movie, The War of the Roses. There's very little love there, lots of reacting. And this is the foundation that cheaters usually come from. And from that foundation that was co-created by both of them, they then go on to make disastrous choices to cheat and to do other things as well that are only going to you know, further destroy the marriage. Every day you have an opportunity to stop yourself from building a poor foundation. You can see your mistake and you can redo that part of the foundation, but you can't if you're not aware of it. I'm going to ask you to bring your partner in and watch this video. I'm gonna give you eight forms of betrayal and what builds a poor foundation. If you too sit down and you start making your own list of ways you feel your partner betrays you, you're gonna have even more things at your list. These are the things I want you to work on and make sure they are solid, co-created in a healthy way. The first form of betrayal that lays the foundation is putting your wants and needs above your partner's all the time. I mean, let's face it, every marriage has this time. Like you're going to want, I'm gonna to wanna to do something my way that is not my partner's. But overall, we share it. And I, it makes pleases me to see him happy and it pleases him to see me happy. That's a really good, healthy foundation. Secondly, taking your partner for granted. When you begin expecting things from your partner, they're invisible to you. You take advantage of them. You no longer appreciate them. You no longer respect them. You assume they're doing their job and you assume they're happy if they don't say anything. Believe me, resentment is quiet. And it's important that you step up and you start appreciating them and telling them how you notice them. You notice all the things they do and you give them the respect of your presence and dating them every single day. Thirdly, emotional cheating. Emotional cheating to me is any time you cross a line and you, you cross a sacred boundary between you and your partner and let some other person into that. That's emotional cheating. It oftentimes leads to sexual cheating, but not always. It's still a huge betrayer and it's a terrible way to lay a foundation on practicing emotional cheating outside your marriage, not standing up for your partner. When your partner is out there with other people attacking, whether it's family, friends, or maybe even your, in your presence, and you don't go to them and stand up for them, that's really bad. When your partner comes home and they tell you something that happened at work and they were really like blindsided, there was no one to stand up for them. It's important that you stand up for them. You take their side and you talk and strategize ways that you can help them through this. When, when you're in a group and your partner is being an outlier and people are saying bad things about them, it's important you bring them into your circle and that you remind other people this is your partner and you love your partner and you will stand by them. They're the best person you know. Number five, lying to your partner, even about stupid little things. A lot of partners have these things where they'll say, well, I'm just kidding. It was just a white lie, it's not a big deal. A lie is a lie. And unless you're transparent, you are co-creating a foundation that is perfect for cheating later down the line. 
Not only is lying a betrayal, it is one of the blatant forms of cheating that happens along with the cheating when it's actually a real affair, emotional or physical. Using your partner's vulnerability or insecurity against them. Saying to your friends, well, we can all go, you know, kayaking or we can all go hiking and your partner, you know, is short of breath and not in good shape is really a betrayal of a form because you're pointing it out. You're making them feel more vulnerable. You're making them feel more insecure about their physical condition. A much better thing is if you're going to get together with friends, find activities your partner can do with ease and that your partner enjoys. You can still help your partner be stronger in these areas. You don't have to be a victim of their vulnerabilities or insecurities, but you do have to respect them and acknowledge them and encourage them that you will help them because you see that these are limitations they have in their mind, but they're not real. Your partner's fantastic. Number seven, distancing yourself emotionally from your partner. I don't care what your partner did. When you use body language like the silent treatment or spending more time with the kids and not be isolating your partner or withdrawing from them sexually, if you can't use your words, you're practicing a very emotionally immature form of communication. It's very important you advocate for yourself. Your partner deserves your truth. When you're angry, it's perfectly fine to say, I am so angry. And then talk about it so that your partner can ask forgiveness and then brainstorm together what you're going to do in the future so this won't happen again. And lastly, pressuring your partner to change. We all have problems and some of us are overweight. Some of us have physical flaws we don't like. Some of us have bad teeth. Some of us have all sorts of things that make us feel bad about ourselves. Become part of the team to restore that. If your partner's unhealthy, sign up and go to the gym with them. Offer to help them. Get them a trainer that's going to help them. That's really important. If your, if your partner's diabetic, then make sure you start cooking healthier. No more fast foods. Join them so that you can keep each other healthy. This is a healthy foundation. Couples that feel supported, that their partner's part of their team, don't cheat. It's not like that. People who cheat make terrible choices, and there's no excuse. It's their own character flaw. But when you come from a marriage that is built on a shaky foundation that's full of betrayals already, I want to ask you, what do you think will happen? Exactly. Take care of your marriage. Take care of each other. And stop the betrayals.